Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video, we're going to put the pistons into the Evanroo block. There's a huge thunderstorm outside at the moment, so hopefully you can hear this, but it might die down. Before we do that though, it's time to do the cool wall. And we have here uh, Rob Watson from Middle Harbour in Sydney. He's totally nailed his photo with uh, Cooper's and a Kookaburra sitting there. So nice one, Rob, that's good. And even cooler is his son, Ivan, did this sort of painting, which I think is really cool too. So I'm gonna whack both, so we'll whack both of these on the board and we'll get into it. The plan today is to slide the pistons into the bores on this block then get some new seals in, some new O-rings, some gaskets, and get the cylinder heads torqued up and on. We might then get to flipping it around and putting the crankshaft in and putting the crankcase on. If not, that'll definitely be next video. The first thing I'm gonna do is start cleaning up a lot of this old RTV from it. If you have a look here, there's these water jackets and they've got a lot of this RTV in them. So I'm gonna to have to get all this old RTV out, get it cleaned up and ready to put the new stuff on. So I'll go and pick all this out, get it all cleaned up, and then we'll start doing the pistons. Here are all the little plugs of RTV that I got out of the water passages. I don't think they had anything to do with this overheating because all these water passages just end at the cylinder block where there's just straight metal, so there's no water flow through there. But uh, they're all cleaned out now, and now I'm gonna clean the bores to get rid of any contaminants from when it was machined, clean the heads, and we'll start putting it together. The service manual says to clean this with warm soapy water, but I don't have warm water and I don't have soap, so I'm just using a bit of brake cleaner. The important thing I think is just to get rid of any sort of abrasive material that might cause damage if it's left behind. The other thing is just making sure that once it's been cleaned up and it's lost that protective layer of oil, that you re-protect it from any sort of corrosion that might occur. Although you can see marks on it, it's actually really smooth around the rest of this area. The only part that I'm using a bit of a razor blade on is just the area around the thermostats. So I'll scrape those clean, give them a wipe, and then I think we're good to go. Next thing I do is replace the seals for the thermostats in the heads. So I'll show you those. We'll pull out the old ones, put the new ones in. These are the seals here at the top I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna use a bit of a seal puller. These are the old ones. There's a fair bit of this sort of aluminium salt corrosion, so I'm gonna clean that up as well before we put the new ones in. Just gonna use a little flathead screwdriver to scrape out the bulk of this corrosion. In hindsight, I probably should have taken these out first to avoid getting mess over the bits I just cleaned, but never mind. On these seals, you might be able to see there's some writing that says this back face goes towards the cylinder head. So this way down, this way up, and I'll just find a little socket that's about the right size and we'll tap those in. New thermostat seals are hammered in now. They sit proud of the head here, presumably that's what gives it a good seal, the same way the O-rings on the other side. We'll put these cylinder heads aside now, they're ready to go, and we'll start putting the pistons into the block. To put the pistons in, there's really only three things we need, other than the pistons. Uh, a ring compressor, which helps squeeze the compression rings in to hold them in so we can push it through. Some sort of mallet to tap it in. You can almost push them in, it shouldn't take a lot of force. I'll probably just be using the rubber end of the mallet just to try and, you know, tap them past. The last thing you need is lots of two-stroke oil. I'm going to be putting two-stroke oil on the piston, two-stroke oil in the cylinders, two-stroke oil on the ring compression tool. I want the whole thing to be really well lubricated so that it slides in nice and easily. I'm also going to be putting a little bit of two-stroke oil in the bearings and things like that, just to help it with a little bit of startup lubrication as well. This ring compressor hasn't been used for a while, so I'm just going to give it a quick clean first because I don't want any of the grit that's in here and dust lying around ending up in the bores either. So this is piston two, which is the top one on the port side. So piston two, top, and I've also got to make sure I get it in the right way, which is with the exhaust port facing towards the center of the motor, which is the exhaust port side of the cylinder. So 
So all just a little squirt into the uh, little end bearing as well. Doesn't say to, but I can't see it hurting. We'll give the ring compressor an oil up. Then I'll go and do the same with the cylinder two bore and we'll get it in. I quite like putting this oil on by hand, provided your hand's clean, other than the oil, because you'll feel grit or any sort of residue really easily with your hand like this. And this feels nice and smooth, clean. So it just gives you that final bit of confidence that we're ready to go and put this piston in. Ring compressors will generally have a top and a bottom. The bottom will often have a sort of bit of a serration where it stops the ring compressor from ever sliding into the bore, which you don't want. In this case, we don't have those serrations, but you can see the rings are slightly offset. So I want that clamping force to be as close to where the piston enters the bore as possible. So once you've got it around the right way, slide the spring compressor on just down past the rings. Doesn't have to be too far on. And the other thing is just to make sure you've got it square. Don't sort of have it sitting on an angle like this when you do it up. So get it pretty square. In this case, it's got a little ratchet mechanism with a quarter inch drive. Just do it up a little bit. Square it up a bit. And once it's sort of square and straight, tighten it down a bit more. All right, now it's in there, rings are compressed. Let's take it over the block and I'll show you which way it goes in. So here on the top of the piston, you might remember from the building the pistons video, we have the exhaust port side, which is here, the center where the exhaust is. So now I'm gonna put the big end bearing through and just use my other hand to sort of guide it through the slot. And let the piston slide down. So now the piston slid down into the ring compressor is sitting against the sleeve. Once we get to that point, we should be able to tap it into the bore. Now, if it feels like something's wrong, chances are it is. Sometimes you can actually just push them. But if it catches, chances are that's because the ring's caught. And if you try and hit it, you're gonna bend a ring, score the cylinder, all that kind of stuff. So you're much better off taking it back out and checking something if it feels like it's getting stuck than using any force whatsoever. I've just rotated the engine forward a little bit because the first stage of getting it down really is getting the big end bearing through the slot in the crankcase. I'll show you that. So we're doing this one, but you can see down here, the big end bearing has to go through that slot. So by reaching underneath, you can sort of use your hand to guide the big end through. Once it's through and you get to this stage where the ring compresses against the sleeve here, that's when you're right to start trying to knock it through. Every time I tap this, even very gently, it's going down now. There we go. So that really didn't take much force at all. They were very gentle taps, and that one's in. So now that's in, I'm gonna repeat the process for the other two port side pistons, and then we'll put the cylinder head on. Before you put these in too, I should probably mention that although we had the rings all aligned to this little dowel here that aligns them, it doesn't hurt just to double check. Make sure nothing's sort of slipped or moved since you assembled the piston. Slowly but surely is definitely the way to go. Put the ring compressor on, have a little look at it first. Just have a look and make sure the rings have actually gone in. If they haven't, take it off, do it again. Once they're in right, pop it in, tap it, 
If it's not going smoothly, take it off, have a look, do it again. At some stage during this job that memory card got full, so I'm not sure how much recorded yet. But what I've done is got all three in now, and although there's plenty of oil on the piston still, I've just cleaned the surface of the mating surface for the head here so that we can put a bit of RTV on it. We're not putting anything around here though, because that's where the thermostat gasket fits on. So that's already got a seal there, so a rubber seal, so we don't need to do that. So I'll go ahead and do that. Then we'll pop the rings in and then pop the cylinder head on. Okay, so I'm never going to be a cake decorator, I admit it, but I've tried to get the thinnest bead I can around each of those. I probably could have actually cut the nozzle closer to the tip, made it a little bit thinner, but it is a continuous bead and this stuff is good because it doesn't migrate. But the thermostat here is free. So now I'm going to put a bit of grease on these O-rings that actually do the sealing for the compression and we'll pop those on, then we'll drop the head on. The service manual says to use triple guard grease for this. I asked the guy at Evernry whether I should order some and he said no. This is a Yamaha grease A. So it's fine. So I'm just going to run some grease all the way around it. And then we'll drop this in. Try not to get too much. These O-rings and the thermostat seals I put in earlier all came as a part of that big Evinrude seal kit, which pretty much contains all the seals you need for the whole power head rebuild. Next thing I need to do is figure out which is the port and starboard cylinder head, because I'll admit it, I didn't label them. I thought it might be obvious, but I had a quick look and it wasn't obvious, so I'll figure out what the trick is to determining which is which. and then we'll go and grab the right one. The only difference I can see is they both got a sensor in. This sensor is a single wire, this sensor is a double wire. So let's see if that sort of clue lets me find out which is which, and we'll go from there. I went and had a look at the parts diagram and the two pin connector goes on the port side, so that's good, at least we know which one's which. But they are the same part number for the cylinder head, so they are identical. All right, I'm ready to pop this on now. I've got here the head bolts which I know because I did actually bother to label them, put them in a bag, unlike the heads themselves. So we've got these ready to go. I'll pop the head on and then we'll talk these up to spec. Obviously this little thermostat seal here goes up at the top here. And then I'm just gonna pop a handful of bolts in just to keep it located. Uh, in case you're wondering, the manual does say to put the bolts in dry, so no sealant, no oil. All those sorts of things, sealants and oils, will affect the torque setting you get. So the torque setting they've given is for a dry bolt. Now I'm just going to go and grab a ratchet and just run these down lightly, then we'll grab the torque wrench and torque them up. Looks like this is a half inch or sort of 13 mil head on all these bolts. So the manual says to torque it up to 24 to 27 Newton meters. It doesn't give, it says to torque it in stages, but it doesn't give you actual stages. I don't think they mean torque to 24, then torque to 27. Look, maybe they do. So what I might do is I'm gonna sort of torque it to say 15, then I might do the 24, 27, just in case that's what they do mean. So I'm gonna torque it in the order on here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. It's marked on the cylinder head. But if it's never marked, all you're really ever doing is starting from the middle and spiraling out. Even though cylinder heads look like a rigid, solid object, they're really not, they do flex. So the idea of this is a bit like if you're doing a sticker, you're sort of starting at the middle and then spreading it out so you get any bubbles or creases out. And that's really what you do when you're talking this up. Now 
Now I'm up to the 27 Newton meters, which is the final stage. It's actually not a lot of torque on these. Some head bolts on cars I've seen have just been ridiculously high. You think you're gonna snap them. Uh, so now I'm just gonna go through, and as I do this final stage, I'm just gonna mark each one just to be double sure that I haven't missed any. All right, well that's the port side done. Probably could have been a little bit neater with the silicon. You know, you got me there, but it'll do the job. It's really just about sealing off those water galleries. It doesn't even matter if you've got too much and they block up. All those blocks we pulled out, all that happens is a gallery comes along and comes flush against the head of the, the motor here. Water doesn't flow through it, so it doesn't matter if a bit seeps in like those plugs we pulled out. All it's stopping it doing is coming to the end and then running along and coming out the head, so it'll be fine. Then you've got the O-rings actually sealing the compression gases. I've run out of time tonight, so I'll just quickly finish off this side, but we'll leave this video here. Next video, I'll do the crankshaft, the crankshaft seals, we'll put the crank case on, talk that up, all that kind of stuff. Once we've done that, I'll start putting all the peripheral items back on, the carburetors, the oil pump, all that sort of thing, and then we'll drop it back on the engine. All right, well, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll catch you next week. See ya.